Okay, fine. Here we go. Fine. Okay, ma'am. So. Okay. So, hello, yeah. everyone. Yes. Should I start? Yes, hello everyone. Uh, so today's topic is no code ML hands on using orange data mining tool. Like orange is one of the data mining tool. Orange is not only the one, but uh, like there are many other tools also. But we have I have selected a one tool to give you the exposure about how to perform machine learning without coding. Okay, so before starting with the like, uh, I, I know the audience is acquainted with them. What is the machine learning and what are the machine learning techniques? Already in the in last session of uh, one of my last session in data analytics, data R, I have explained what is machine learning and what are the techniques. If you don't know, you can go back to those, uh, go back to that session and just uh, concern what is about machine learning and what are the techniques related to it. So right now I'm just starting with directly with the hands-on session on orange data mining tool. So the outline of today's session, the outline of today's session is like, uh, first I will show you what's how the orange, uh, when you open the orange tool, what's the first page that it shows to you, then how you can do the visualizations of data and pre-processing in it, then what is, uh, what is supervised? Uh, what are supervised learning algorithms, and how to implement the supervised learning algorithms in uh, uh, Orange Tool? So, along with the supervised learning algorithms, we will go with the uh, how cross validation training is performed, how normal training without cross validation is performed, then what are the performance metrics that uh, that are used to evaluate the machine learning algorithms? What is ROC curve? And what are the testing results, uh, results and the prediction? Like how to uh, get the testing results, how to get the training results, uh, how to get the validation results, and what are the, the three different aspects? And next uh, is approach of uh, machine learning is unsupervised learning. There, there we will cover three algorithms, key means, hierarchical cluster, clustering, and manifold learning. So just before moving ahead, uh, I will just go to the, just a minute. Go to the orange tool so like when you open the tool this is the picture that you will get when you start the uh, orange data mining tool this is the picture you will get welcome to orange and here are some widgets like new open recent uh, video tutorials get started examples documentation so new is for creating a new file when others open is for the uh, existing file and all these uh, uh, down uh, widgets like video tutorials, get started examples. These are for learning how to use the orange tool. So the one who is new to it can use these uh, widgets and can learn how to use the orange tool. So now I am interested in new file. So I have created a new file. This is my new file. So here, this is like the, here, there are the widgets and they are grouped into some common name, like here data. So all these widgets are related with data sets. Here you can use SQL table. If you want to go for SQL table, you can just drag and drop here and import the SQL table from the SQL server. While here I'm interested in a file, a, CS a CSV file report, or I can say a simple file. Okay, now here to show you the how machine learning works, I will just uh, take any data set, a common data set that is Iris data set. I will take one IDs data set. So I will just click, double click on the file. Now I want to import a data set. So in Orange, automatically a IDs is available. In, when you install the Orange, these six, six data sets are already available in the data sets uh, uh, that get installed by default along with Orange. So you can directly take this IDs tab, IDs.tab. Now this file, like IDs is a flower name where it has the features based on the features the flowers are classified the the features are sepal length sepal width petal length and petal width and these all features are numeric in type and the role which they are playing are the features so and finally like if we are performing a classification algorithm 
so you have to you you need one categorical vari variable or target variable so your iris iris is the type of a flower so here the iris has three categorical va variables so it, it it has iris citosa iris uh, versicolor and uh, the third one is iris virginica so it is divided the flower based on these three four features the category of this iris flower is divided into citosa versicolor or virginica okay so we are using a iris flower data set which consists of 150 instances 150 instances means there are 150 rows in the table while four features and one is a target variable so there are five features we can say uh, four are the input variables and fifth is an output variable that is our target variable okay so we are going to perform classification here so i'm applying the okay once it is applied now if you want to see the data you have a table you can uh, see the data in the data table so data table is available here so all these are drag and drop features so if you want to see just you have to connect just connect the file to data table and you can see the complete data here so this is like complete data you can see uh, iris that is the name of the flower sepal length the length it's a numeric number sepal width petal length and petal so this is just a description about the data set. Now, if you want to visualize the data, if you want to visualize the data in a form, how the data is represented. Generally, uh, most of the research papers show the visualization of the data and they used to analyze the data from its visualization. So for visualization, here we have a visualize uh, category. So here you can find tree viewer. Tree viewer is for viewing a tree, decision tree. I will show you how to use it. But right now we are interested in scatter plot, bar plot. Yes, I will drag drop few and I will show you how to visualize your data. Then we can take a um, linear projection because linear projection is for three, 3D data, while scatter plot and bar plot can show you 2D data. So this is a scatter plot. So here, instead of selected data, we have not selected any. Like if you want to see any selected data, then you can select the data and you can see in the graph. But right now I want to, uh, I don't want to select any data. I just want to do the complete analysis of the data. So I will not select anything. So this is, uh, I will open the scatter plot. You can see how this data is represented. So blue is iris citosa, then pink is iris versicolor and yellow is virginica. So like you can see blue category is uh, differently placed in a one group, like from as per the sepal length, here we have taken x axis sepal length and y axis sepal width. So, according to it, uh, iris citosa, citosa is very much uh, different from virginica and versicolor. They are both together, we can see here. Okay, so uh, this is what you can represent, you can analyze from the data. Now, here I am changing the x axis, I'm changing petal length and petal width. Now you can find that iris citosa, iris versicolor, and iris virginica, all three are separately placed based on petal width and petal length. So now you can say from this analysis, what you can say? You can say this, petal width and petal length are two features which, are, which can place the three categories into different groups. We can find a different group, group one, group two, and group three. So it's like uh, you can see the separate three groups in three different colors. Okay, so this was about scatter plot. If you want to go for bar plot, generally, when you have four, four features, why I have selected this data set? Because this data set has few features. It has only five features. Among them, one is a target variable. So it's very easy to show you the analysis using these plots. Okay, so this is a bar plot you can see. So the bar plot is based on sepal length and sepal, uh, its values are sepal length only. Here we have a bar plot is giving the sepal length values. So this is like giving you the one dimensional. Okay, so this is not required for this data set. Now next is linear projection. So in linear projection, you can see how the data set is uh, done. So here we have three dimensions. Like the features are known as dimensions in machine learning. When uh, the graph is created, if you uh, like, if you are creating a three-dimensional graph, you have three different features. If you are creating two-dimensional graph, you have two different features. 
So here you can see from three dimension, even using petal length, sepal length, and sepal width, the categories, uh, the versicolor and virginica are grouped very, the line of difference is very close, while uh, citosa is very much different than two. You can just select the features from here and you can change the graph and you can see uh, how, which features are more giving better results to you in case of visualization. So I have shown you three graphs. You can try different graphs from visualize. Uh, if previous red viz, you can try different and you can see which one gives you the better results and what analysis you can make from visualization. So for like keeping these graphs, like in data analysis or data science, uh, giving the visualization of the features is very important to understand how the uh, data is distributed. So that's why the scatter plot is scatter plot is here. It's getting very good results based on two features, two dimensional features. Okay, so this was about visualization. Now, now we are moving towards uh, how to use machine learning algorithm. Now I want to perform classification. So to perform classification, it is a supervised learning. Okay, so here we have the models, classification models. Here we have KNN, tree, random forest, gradient boosting algorithms, EDA boost, and all these are the algorithms. So I will show you the uh, few algorithms. Uh, now, see, in case of machine learning, we are dividing the data into two parts. Actually, sometimes in three parts, sometimes in two parts. So that is training data and testing data. So now this file, I'm having this file, and I want to divide the data into two parts where 80% of my data will be provided to the training and 20% of the data will be provided to testing. So here I will select data sampler. So what data sampler is doing here? Data sampler will divide your data into two parts. So you can double click on here and you can uh, fix the proportion. If you want 70, to, uh, 70, just you can move this, uh, 70, 30, you can go for 70, 30, but generally uh, like either 70, 30 or 80, 20 are the general uh, uh, training and testing ratios. So you can keep it as your wish. So here I'm keeping 80, 20. So this is 80, 20. So the data sampler is giving 80% of data while 20% uh, of data will be provided to the testing. So that I will decide. Now I will select the algorithms that I want to train. So simply from going into the model. Now this is the model. I am sele selecting few algorithms like tree. I am selecting tree. Okay, so I will remove this because already we have done. So if there are more widgets, then it will uh, take more time to execute and it will take more time to uh, drag and drop. So simply I'm taking tree. Then I am taking, if you want neural networks, then I am uh, taking SVM. I'm taking the three algorithms. You can try a different one. Now each algorithm has different parameters for settings. Okay, so now for tree. Now, how these are the hyperparameters. Now, hyperparameters in machine learning algorithm are one which uh, like other uh, that that you can use algorithms to optimize it. Like you have to optimize the hyperparameters to get the better results. This is how the machine learning algorithm works. Each and every machine learning algorithm uh, has uh, has to uh, like has some hyperparameters. Okay, and you need to optimize it to get better results. And like for optimization, there are different algorithms. Either you can do by trial and basis error, like here we are doing minimum number of instances in leaves. Here we two. If you want to keep one, if you want to keep two, if you want to keep three. So if I want binary tree, we can keep two. We can keep two. Okay. Then how you want to split it? Uh, do do not split subsets smaller than five. So these all three are the hyperparameters. Even stop when majority reaches 95%. So like this is also a hyperparameter, whether you want to tick or not. So by default, I'm having these three. I'm taking the default length, limit the maximum three depth to 100. You can change these parameters and increase the accuracy. Like you have to optimize these parameters. You have to find the best values of these parameters to get best results. So this, is, this was about tree. So now I will just drag this data sampler to the tree. And here I will say data sample data. Okay, now here we have two options, data sample and remaining data. Now in case of data sample, we have 80% of the data. 
while in case of remaining data, we have 20% of the data. So right now I want training. I'm training the algorithm. I'm training the decision tree. So for training, I will take 80% of the data. So I will use data sample. Okay. Now similarly for neural networks, data sample. And similarly for SPM, I will use data sample. That is 80% of data for training. Now see in neural networks also, you have to decide how many neurons you want to keep. Now, see here neurons in hidden layer. See here we have a single hidden layer and we have uh, 10 neurons. If you want to increase the layer, you have to give semicolon and you have to define the, like see, if you have uh, one layer, so one layer is having 10 neurons in a one hidden layer. Now, if you want to increase the, Hidden layer, just give semicolon. The second hidden layer will have 20 neurons. You can keep. Then uh, third hidden layer can have uh, 40, uh, 30, whatever. Like you can change this. But right now I'm just for simplicity because if I will increase the number of hidden layers and if I will increase the number of neurons, the time taken for the neural network will be more. And right now, uh, if I will stay for training, so it will take a time and I can't move ahead with other topics. So just for simplicity, I'm keeping one hidden layer, which is having 10 uh, neurons. Okay. Now here you can change the activation function. Now activation function you have to uh, define according to the problem. Generally for ReLU is for classification, like uh, for binary classification, we use ReLU, 10H, uh, like logistic. Each of these functions have different uh, functionality. So for simplification, I will use ReLU here. Then optimizer, which optimizer you are going to use? So optimizer, there are three available. I'm using Adam optimizer. Adam generally gives a better results. You can just change these values and you can optimize your results. Then regularization. Regularization is a uh, function to avoid overfitting. So just you can change like uh, here, you can keep 0 0.1, 0 0.001, 0, what you want to keep, you can keep. I'm keeping 0 0.0001, okay? now. In case of neurons, you have to, sorry, in case of neural networks, you have to give number of iterations. Like how many times a neural network should train itself? So I'm saying maximum number of times of iterations are 30. These are epochs. Like in case of uh, deep learning, we call them epochs. How many epochs, for how many epochs you want to uh, train the deep learning algorithm? So maximum number of epochs are 30 here. Okay. So these are the hyperparameters for neural network. Similarly, for SPM, we have kernel. In SPM, you have two options, SPM and BSPM. There is a difference between the working bit uh, working in uh, advanced version of SPM and SPM. I'm taking the simple version. The cost and regression loss epsilon, the, the default are given. So I'm taking the default one. You can change these values. Either you can use some algorithm uh, to optimize this. So now if you want to add some algorithm, here is a Python script. You can write a Python script and along with it and you can code. So you can add the Python script also, uh, Python code also with this uh, drag and drop feature to give them more advanced functionality. So right now I will not code and I will just show you the basic structure. So these are the like for SPM, you can uh, decide the VSPM, SPM, and if you want to go optimize, you want to write the algorithm for optimization, you can write it in the Python code and just uh, link the tree, uh, tree neural network with the optimization you will get. Then here, we have to select the kernel. Which kernel you want to go? Linear, polynomial, RBF, sigmoid. So if you want to go for linear, right now I'm, I'm selecting only linear kernel. So linear kernel. Then what is the numerical tolerance? These all are optimization parameters. Then what is the iteration limit? Iteration limit is 100. So these all are the hyperparameters that you need to optimize to get the better results. Okay. So this was uh, about the hyperparameters and tuning in Orange 2. Now, the, uh, now we want to check the score. Now, what is the score of the algorithm is? So here we have an evaluate test and score feature. Now, to see the accuracy, recall, precision for this, I am uh, just linking all the algorithms to test and score. Now, once you open it, you will not get any results. There are no results. Why? The reason is you have to select the data sample. And you have to also provide the data. We, like most of the uh, like newcomers uh, don't select the data 
and they just link the algorithms and they say there is no test and score. Definitely there will be not until or unless you will provide the training data to the test and score. Okay. So once you provide the training data, you can uh, see the results. There is 100% accuracy for tree. This is, sorry, this is AUC, area under curve. This is classification accuracy. This is F1 measure. This is precision and this is recall. I will give you the, I will show you the formulas for this. The formulas are given in the slides. I will just show you the slide. You can go through it later. I will not explain each and every one in detail right now. Uh, now see, here there are options. Test on train data. Here, here we are using a training data, the training data that we have provided. Okay. Now training data, it is trained only once. Now to general, now this, this calculation is wrong. Why? Because you are training the data only once. The data is trained only once. Okay. Now to generalize your model, you have to go for cross validation. Now, what is the cross validation? So for generalization, you can select cross validation. So we'll explain you how the cross validation works. So in the slides, just I will explain you how this cross validation is working. Uh, so see what, what happens in a cross validation and what happens in the normal training. In case of normal training, all the training data that is shown in here in um, the green, blue, uh, green color, uh, this complete data, training data is provided to the algorithm for training at once and only it is trained once. Well, in case of cross validation training, you have to you have to divide the data into folds. You can decide what cross validation K you want. It's K fold cross validation. Now, whether you want five fold cross validation, you want 10 fold cross validation, depending upon that, you are dividing the training data. So the training data is divided into five folds here. Like it will be equally distributed into five folds. Okay, five folds means we are dividing the data Training, fold one is kept for testing, while fold two, fold three, fold four, and fold five. Am I audible? Hello, am I audible? Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, your okay. voice just uh, like we lost you for a moment, but okay. It now is it's clear? clear. Yes. Okay. Okay. Uh, so uh, we have five folds. Like you can divide it into 10 also. So it depends like uh, whether you are using five-fold uh, cross-validation or 10-fold cross-validation. Here, this is an example of five-fold cross-validation where we are training the algorithm for five times. Like in the first time, we will keep fold one, subset one for testing and subset two, three, four, and five. These four subsets will be used for training. Now in second training phase, fold one, three, four, and five will be given for training and fold two will be given for testing. And similarly, this will happen for all the five folds. All the five folds will be given for, uh, one by one will be given for testing and other folds will be given for training. And in this manner, the training happens for the five times. And this is known as cross validation, five fold cross validation. Okay, now what is the benefit of validation? The benefit of validation is that you, you have uh, like you will generalize your model because each and every part of your data is given for a training as well as for a testing. Okay, so in this manner, your model will get generalized and will be free from overfitting and underfitting problems that are the common problems in machine learning. So here, instead of selecting, instead of selecting uh, like a Test on train data, I will use cross validation. And here I am using number of folds as 10. So it is 10 fold cross validation. Like you see, when you click on. I can hear you. Okay, yeah. Hello? Your voice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Please continue. Is it clear now? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It just, okay. yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay, so here I'm selecting cross validation and the number of folds are 10. So here we have three SVM and neural network. You can see like when I select on the test on train data, you get AUC as one for three and classification accuracy as 99.2. Well, when you do cross validation, these parameters will get decreased. Why? Because this result was only for a single training. 
when you train more when you are training for 10 folds you are getting the accurate results what will happen when you train when you don't perform the cross validation and only you perform the training on the train data you will not get good results in testing when you will give the unseen data now here we are providing a target variable to the model so target variable uh, is there so the model can learn accurately while when you are uh, given uh, when you are given the train model to the unseen data for predictions at that time the accuracy will be very low because that model is not a generalized model it is trained only once that's why we are training it for 10 times and we are also providing the unseen data to the model so that it can it can give very good accuracy okay so always prefer cross validation to generalize your model okay so finally we are getting this result so here we can see svm outperforms among the others by giving 96.7% uh, accuracy. Okay, even you can here select the other parameters like what's the training time, what's the testing time. So this is gives like which uh, algorithm performs fast, which doesn't perform fast. Even you can select the losses, like you can select the different parameters that you want to check. This was about cross validation. Okay, now next uh, is uh, test and score. After this, you want to see the confusion matrix. So if you want to see the confusion matrix, here is a confusion matrix. So you can just select the test and score with confusion matrix and you can select the algorithm. This is for tree. So you know what is confusion matrix. This is for uh, this is for uh, three classes. So like I will just explain you, I will just uh, not explain you, but show you how the, what is confusion matrix. So confusion matrix gives you the true positive rate, sorry, true positive values, false negative values, false positive and true negative. So here it is very like actual X, actual no, predicted yes and predicted no. Now what is this? Like uh, this is like the actual value of the, uh, what is a tar uh, actual value, target value. If it, it's yes, here we have yes and no because it's a two, the confusion matrix is developed for two classes. Okay. So for two classes, we have yes. If it is actually yes and predicted yes by the model, then it is true positive. If it is actual no and predicted yes by the model, then it is false negative. And similarly, actual yes and predicted no, false positive, actual no and predicted no, or true negative. And these are the formulas of classification accuracy, recall, precision, and F1 score. All these formulas are based on the confusion matrix values. Okay, so you can go through this slide and understand the formulas. I will just move ahead. Okay, so here you can get the confusion matrix. So you can select the confusion. Now here we have three classes. So we have three by three matrix. Okay, so this is the total number of instances, 120. Then Siris Etosa and Siris Sitosa is uh, like the true values are th 36, we can say. Then Siris Versicolor, the true values are 35. And the true values for Virginica, the correctly classified values we can see are 41. So this diagonal values will be the true classified values. Well, these are false, uh, these are the false, uh, wrongly classified values, okay? So this is the, how the confusion metric works. You can go for neural networks, you can go for SVM and check for the confusion metrics. Okay, now there are various curves that you can go. So I will just explain you how the ROC curve works because ROC analysis is very important in case of machine learning. So just you can test and go and go for ROC analysis. Here we have the analysis for all three algorithms you can see. And ROC curve gives you the uh, graph for F, uh, uh, like you can say false positive rate with the true positive rate. So here we have three algorithms, tree green, SVM blue and neural networks is giving very bad accuracy. We have seen already it was only 51%. So that's why the graph is like this. Now, how you can see which algorithm performs well? The algorithm, the graph, the ROC graph, which is pointing more towards one, which is pointing more towards zero one. This point is more nearer to zero one. That is giving you good accuracy. So here we can see that blue graph is pointing very nearer to one, uh, zero one. So that's why we can say SVM is giving good accuracy. And uh, from the results also, we found that SVM was giving good, good accuracy among the three. So this was all about supervised learning algorithms. And now we want to predict the data. Now we haven't used this 20% of the data. So how to use this 20% of the data? 
I'm taking another test and score and I am providing uh, the trained algorithms to all these, to the new test and score. And I'm also providing this data sampler. Now see, this data sample, I'm taking data sample dot data. That was 80% of the data. Now I have to change it. I will double click here and I will say remaining data to data. And not to data, actually test data. I want to test. So I will just click to the test data. Just you have to point from here to here to get a link. Okay, so now remaining data to test data. Um, should I answer the question? Someone is raising a hand. Uh, actually, ma'am, there are few questions in the chat as well. So okay. it depends should, on your convenience. Uh, we can answer we, it towards yeah, the end as well. Yeah. yeah, that's fine. We will answer it towards that. Yeah, sure. Okay. okay. Uh, so you have doubts, whatever doubts you have, we will answer uh, after ending the session. Okay, so like uh, we, uh, we have taken the test and score and we were uh, giving the 20% of the data to, as a test data to the test score. Now, why we want to see the test results? Now here we will select test on test data. Okay, we haven't provided the data sampler again. So we have to provide this here. Data. Now we will get the results. So now I'm saying test on test data. So this is my testing results. Now SPM is giving 100% result because uh, it was giving the good accuracy. Neural network is giving 60% or uh, like 43% uh, and classification accuracy is 96 for three. Okay, this is for test data. Now you want to make predictions. So here there is a option for prediction too. Uh, this is predictions. I will provide this test data to the predictions. 20% of the data, this is unseen data on the model. And you can see these are the predictions that are made. So this is the class probability of classes that is shown. Okay, so uh, classes and data. So here for this instance, it is Virginica. So it is showing the predicted values. Okay. So this is how you can make the predictions. These are the predictions made uh, for the instances. Now, if you want to select, if you want to select a particular data and you want to make the prediction, you can just add uh, remaining data to the data table and you can select the data from here. You can select this data and provide it to the predictions. Uh, remaining data. Okay. So this is the remaining data and I'm selecting this instance. This is Iris Virginica. I'm selecting this instance and I want the prediction for this. Selected data, okay. So now you can see predictions. File is already open. This is a prediction. The prediction made is RS Virginica. Okay, so this is a right prediction. So if you want to make the prediction, just select the data for which the prediction to be made and the prediction will be given here. Okay, uh, I'm showing the class and data, classes known to the data. You can select the model, show the probabilities for classes and data. So performance score. Why I'm not able to see. I've selected the data. That's why it's not showing the complete picture. So this is how you can uh, do the predictions. So this was all about the supervised learning. Here we are performing the classification. Here the data is being classified depending upon the sepal length, sepal width, petal length, and petal width. It is being classified into version. Now this was about the supervised learning. Now next part is about the unsupervised learning. So here we have the algorithms for unsupervised learning. We will use the same data. Just I will remove all these things. It will take time to open a new document, so it's better to remove it. Okay, now, uh, now we are, I'm not dividing into the data sampler. I will just, because see, in unsupervised learning, there is no target variable. It will just give you the correlations it will do the groupings. Okay, so there will be no target variable. 
target variable will not be used based on the features it will be used. So here I'm using k-means clustering algorithm. Now in case of k-means clustering algorithm, this is unsupervised. In unsupervised, you have to, uh, it will divide based, it will group the, um, it will group the instances based on the distance, okay? So how far it is, it will be paced in a different group and how uh, nearer it is, it will paste into the same group. So here we are not uh, using classification. Here there is no classification. Here there will be groupings, there will be clusters. Okay, so we are, I'm using the same data set, Iris data set. So here I'm selecting, Where, here you can select different uh, um, like clusters. So if you want fixed cluster, you can keep fixed. And if you want variable, you can keep variable. Now in variable, it will give you a Chilotes course. The Chilotes course indicates that which, uh, how many clusters will be good. Like here in case, uh, here two clusters are uh, good as, com uh, as compared to the others because the score is high. The higher score indicates good results. Okay, the two clusters will be good. So we are select instead of we will keep it fixed and we will go for two clusters. Okay, now, but in our case, we have three classes. So it's better to keep three. In our case, we have three uh, different classes. So it's better to keep three instead of two, because if we will keep two, uh, the other class will get merged. So it's better if I'm keeping three and let's check whether they are grouped into different classes or not. So I'm keeping three and I'm keeping two fixed. Now, if you want to see this analysis and you want to see whether they are grouped, I will use a scatter plot. So scatter plot will give me how it is grouped. Now I will, uh, the color, is based on the, I have three clusters, so I'm keeping three. So cluster one is blue, cluster two is red, and cluster three is uh, green. So here we have cluster two, which is separately grouped. Here we have blue. Some of the instances are separately grouped, while some are merged with cluster three. Okay, so for this cases, like where you have the instances which are uh, getting merged, instead of using k-means, Fuzzy k-means works very well. Fuzzy k-means means, means uh, some percent, uh, here there is a, uh, like C2 and C3. So here we will have uh, another cluster, which will say this, this uh, instance will fall 40% uh, into cluster three and 20% 20 per, uh, 20 into other cluster. Okay, so this was about, like uh, if you want to go for fuzzy, fuzzy k-means, it will give you the fuzzy nature. It will give you the probability. What is the probability of this instance to fall in cluster C2? And what is the probability of this cluster to fall in cluster C3? Sorry, C1 and C3 we have. Blue is C1. What is the probability of falling into C1 and C3? Here it is saying it is in cluster three, C3. And here you can select. It will give the information. Okay. Uh, so it will give you the information about the instances. So this was about how you can visualize your k-means results with scatterplot. The next algorithm that we are going to see is uh, hierarchical clustering. Hierarchical clustering is like uh, like uh, you have the hierarchies. Like it's like a tree structure. So if I'm providing the data here, oh okay. For hierarchical clustering, first there is a need to calculate the distance. K means automatically calculate the distance. You have to just inform that which, dis uh, which distance you have to use. But here there is no option. It is using Shilote. Uh, then here you have to calculate the distance between the points. So in unsupervised, there is a dis uh, distance widget that uh, needs to be placed between the phi and the hierarchi uh, hierarchical cluster. So in case of distance, you have to select which distance you want. There are the matrix. So you want... Euclidean distance, Descartes, cosine, absolute person, Mahanobelis, which you want. So I'm uh, selecting a Euclid. Euclidean is a most common matrix, which use, uh, which is better if you don't know which uh, distance will work well on your data. So just try with Euclidean and check the results. So I will just do the distance with hierarchical clustering. So you will get the data in the form of tree. So here it is divided into different clusters. This is a uh, super cluster, then we, this, there are subclusters to the super cluster. So this is like a hierar hierarchical nature, like a tree, like having the branches and then dividing into 
uh, Iracetosa, Virginica, and Versicolor. So hierarchical clustering works in this manner. And if you want to see whether this, what is the instance of this cluster C1, you can just select this with the, like I have selected C1, or you can just open the data table and check the instance. So whatever you want to select from the graph and you want to see which instance it is, you can just go and check. It is Iris Citosa. And you can check it is Iris Citosa and cluster C1. You can check it here in the graph. The selected one is Iris Citosa in cluster C1. Okay, so this is how you can analyze the unsupervised learning algorithms. So next we have other algorithm is manifold learning. So I will go into unsupervised. Mm. Manifold learning is one of the algorithm which works with, it's like a very famous algorithm for unsupervised learning. So manifold algorithm, we are providing the data. You can see here, uh, you can select the method that you want. You want locally linear embeddings, how you want to create the embeddings. Generally, the most famous one is TSEN that I'm using. Metric is a distance metric that you want to use. Here, there are four options given to you. Use Euclidean, and here are the hyperparameters that you want to go. Now, in case of uh, uh, manifold learning, uh, you have to either use the initialization. PCA is principal component analysis, while other one is a random. I, you can select any one of them. So here I'm seeking the, selecting PCA. PCA is principal component analysis, which is used for feature extraction or feature reduction, we can see. If there are 10 features and you want to reduce it to two or three, then you can go for PCA, okay? So what is the benefit of feature reduction? The benefit of feature reduction is like if uh, it generally uh, happens when you have number of instances less and you have number of features more. If there are only 100 instances with you and you have 50 features, then in that case, you have to reduce your features to give better accuracy, to get better accuracy. Uh, if you have more observations or more instances than the number of uh, features, this problem is known as curse of dimensionality. Due to the curse of dimensionality, you will not get accurate results. Uh, curse of dimensionality, the name is given because the features are known as dimensions. If there are three features, we say three dimensions. If there are two features, we say two dimensions. And if there are 50 features, we say it's a 50 dimensional. Okay, so it's very tough to handle the 50 dimensions if you have only 100 instances. So that's why you have to reduce your dimensions. That's why in that case, you can use PCA principal component analysis. So like in manifold learning, it is uh, using a feature reduction technique to give, get your accurate results. Again, you can analyze the data using scatter plot. So just have a, select the scatter plot here. And you can see how it has been transformed data. Okay. So here we have three clusters. Now see, in case of k-means, you were not, you were getting uh, like for Iris, Virginica, Versicolor, and, uh, Versicolor and Virginica, many instances were grouped together. But here you can see only few of them of Virg Versicolor are belonging to Virginica. So manifold learning gives better results than k-means clustering um, because it has various disadvantages. It's a basic algorithm. Okay, so this was all about the um, unsupervised learning algorithms. Now, just I want to tell, I have just covered only two parts here, unsupervised learning algorithm and supervised learning algorithms. Now, here we have different widgets also, like image analytics. You can also uh, perform image processing using this uh, image analytics. So I don't have much time because we are have only 10 to 15 minutes more. Just I have to give you the introduction about how to install these widgets and all. So I will just tell you in five minutes uh, what are the other uh, widgets that you can use. So image analytics is one for image processing. Then you have text mining where you can do the sentimental analysis. You can take the Twitter data. There is an option for Twitter data. PubMed data. PubMed uh, gives you the articles, documents. So PubMed data, Twitter data, you can directly just uh, drag and drop. You can convert, you can extract the data and you can just convert it into bag of words. Those who know how uh, NLP works, they can use sentiment and analysis, extract keywords. Uh, so these are like uh, for text mining. That is for NLP, natural language processing can be performed here. 
while uh, image analytics there are other more widgets i have not installed here so you can install it you can go in options and add-ons so if you go in add-ons insufficient permission to okay uh, might be that uh, there will be no space in my drive that's why it's showing insufficient so i am not able to install it right now so there are these associate bioinformatics like for bioinformatics uh, like gene analysis so that can be done for educational for data analysis for edu educational you can uh, have this widget you can install it and you can start using it so just click here if you want to install click here say install say okay and it will get installed right now in my case it will not get installed because uh, there is no space in my drive right now so that's why it is not giving me the permission then geographical data if you want to go then there is a spectroscopy single cell prototype and there are many other widgets like for time series analysis like so survival analysis world happiness so you can install and use these widgets like i have just told you two supervised and unsupervised you can go for other widgets and try and see what results you are getting so this was all about the orange tool uh i think we have we need 10 minutes for question answering session so i am not able to tell you about image analytics else i would have told you how this works okay then uh, let's start with question answering session those who have uh yes yeah. uh, so we have quite a few questions yeah so the first uh, one is yeah yeah yes okay you you can go ahead yeah. okay so is orange can integrate with our language and uh, python python lib to rescue some advantages it can be you see it is developed in python like orange tool is developed in python like even if you are interested in java uh, those who know java very well and they want to use java tool veka is a software veka is similar to orange data mining tool uh, which is also very good and you can integrate uh, it's developed in java that's difference is this is developed in python and veka is developed in java so you can integrate with python i have told you that uh, you can write the python script do you think no code or low code will be replacing for example python no definitely not there are very limited functionalities that's why a python script is given to you so you can use the functionalities which are given in the orange tool and you can combine the python script with it and you can go for the advanced functionality uh ma'am okay. just a minute uh guys yeah. i have launched a feedback poll so uh in the meantime please give us the feedback and fill in the poll uh also ma'am uh, uh the attendees cannot see those questions so uh mm -hmm. since you are reading it loud so it is great okay uh, my screen is shared right so yeah, yeah. no they why? cannot see those questions because it it will be visible only to you and me okay okay fine yeah. so i'm reading the questions right yeah, yeah. So, you are doing perfect okay. so next Thank question you. is uh, should we split our data into train and test after eda or we should perform eda after splitting the data see there is no need of splitting the data uh before eda because uh, uh, like uh, we need a uh, data and uh, like uh, pre processing steps uh, to the uh, like uh, we needed pre processing steps for the training data testing data is the unseen data that we are providing to the model directly so there is no need uh, to go for the complete data set uh, just you can uh, divide the data set and perform the pre processing on the training data only that will be good how can we take different Activation functions for hidden function, and we can take multiple. That is the hyperparameters. You have to uh, divide. You have to just uh, uh, like try uh, either use trial and basis error, or either you go for optimization algorithms that will help you to understand uh, which activation. See, activation functions have different uh, role, and according to the problem, you can decide. Well, in case of number of hidden layers and the number of neurons in the hidden layers, it is tough. So that is the hyperparameter. you have to use either optimization algorithm for it or either you can uh, go for a, a like a try and check which one is getting good results why did the neural networks give very low accuracy uh, the reason is might be uh, like for neural networks we have we have taken only one hidden layer so that it, it should get executed fast if you will increase the hidden layer and number of neurons you will optimize it definitely it will get a good accuracy and neural networks generally give good accuracy for all the uh results next we have uh, can we use this for text classification yes definitely text mining you have to use text mining uh widget okay then next is uh 
how come the NN has bad accuracy during training, but average accuracy on test data? Uh, the reason is in test data, there are few samples. There is only 20% of data. And like in case of, uh, uh, there are more data. So like the accuracy was not very good as compared to SVM. Definitely SVM was uh, outperforming in case of training and testing. So no, we don't have to care. Like if it, it would have performed outperformed SVM, then it was giving us a wrong results. So like uh, it's giving bad accuracy because uh, you have to optimize the parameters. If one decides on two level hidden layers, would one create and link another neural net like you did for the first layer or how? Yeah, you can do it. You can create the two level hidden layer or three level hidden layer, different neural networks, uh, just drag and drop and change the parameters and train. Which one is giving you good results? Uh, you can keep it, others you can delete. So this is like a trial and error. You can just check what is giving good results and move ahead. What does prediction mean in this instance? Prediction means you are providing the only features. You are not providing the target variable. You are only providing sepal length, sepal width, petal length, and petal width. Only from this data, it will, it will classify whether it is Situsa, Virginica, or Versicon. And the prediction that was given, the, that was predicted by the model, trained model. Which algorithm was used in the prediction? Mm, you, there was an uh, option to select an algorithm for prediction. You can select uh, SVM, uh, neural network. At that time, I didn't told you which algorithm is selected. But when you open the prediction option, there will be a option which algorithm you want to select. What is the difference between orange and KNIME? I don't know what's KNIME. I don't know really. Uh, I have used Orange, I've used Weka, there is Rapid Miner, there are uh, like uh, SPSS is also there, which is a statistical tool, but I don't know about KNIME. Uh, then, can the evaluated results or the algorithm stage be incorporated into another app device? Uh, yes, you can save the results. You can save the results. Uh, and yeah, you even you can save the model. Uh, here, there is an option to save and load the model, train model. I forgot to told you, tell you, you can save your model. You can save your train model. Now here, I, it was uh, just trained in few seconds. But when you are working with text and images, it will take uh, one hour to train the model. So at that time, you, you need to save the model. The model will be trained. So whenever next time uh, you want to load the model, it will directly get loaded. You don't have to uh, train it again. Okay. So th these are the options, save model and load model for it. How did you separate data into test and training data? I have used data sampler. This is a data sampler you can use. Okay, then uh, what format of data is used by this software in the file? I have used CSV file. Actually, uh, it was tab dot tab, which was automatically there, but you can use CSV file. Like most of the machine learning algorithms is available in CSV file. Uh, the, most of the data for the machine learning algorithms is available in the CSV file. Okay, next is, uh, do we have an auto ML module to tune the hyperparameter? No, we don't have. Uh, you have to write the code for it in the Python script. Then how we can train model with parallel GPU we, when we have a huge data? See, for huge data, this will take, lot, orange tool will take a lot of time. So it is not uh, preferable for the huge data, even for images. Images, it takes a lot of time as compared to Python because Python provides GPU support. While orange, uh, we don't have. So you have to uh, go for Python when you want to use GPUs and when you have a huge data. Is OINS application, it's freely available. You don't have to take any license. It's freely available. It's an open source software. Okay, then once we trained model with Orange software, after that, can we download this model and use for prediction on cloud server? Yes, definitely. You can download the model. Uh, actually, uh, you can save the model. You can not download it, actually. You can save the model. And the same model can be used in the Python script. Is it Beka or Veka? It is Veka, W-E-K-A. -E it's W-E-K-A. -E uh, then uh, we have, does it do data preprocessing? Yes, it do preprocessing, cleaning, outlier detection. Already preprocessing, I have discussed uh, in the previous uh, session, so I haven't discussed here. So like, uh, th there is an option for pre-processing. I will just show you. Pre-processing, transform rules. Yeah, here is a pre-processing. 
You can pre-process your data. You can select the features, discretize continuous variables, impute missing values. You can fill the missing values. So there are many options. You can just go and check this widget. Is there any way to save and load the model? Yes, there is. Difference between AWS and Orange. Oh, see, Orange is a data mining tool. It has drag and drop features, so you cannot compare with AWS. Is there any way to save and load? Yes, definitely. I have told you how to save and load the model. Does Orange comes with the Anaconda distribution? No, but uh, it is a uh, like it is. It comes with Anaconda distribution, but you can write the Python script uh, directly. The, there is an option for Python script here. Then Orange software available in the internet browser is free. It's free. Already I have answered these questions, I think. Performance tuning is possible. Yes, definitely it's possible, but not in Orange. You have to uh, write the code for uh, in Python. Hyperparameter tuning is the Orange. Mm, I think most of the answers are repeated now. Uh, yes, ma'am. Two questions yeah. have been repeated because they cannot the see the questions. From their end. Okay. So, okay. So now so most of the other questions, questions are, are common. Correct. Okay. Okay. Uh, so yeah, and here also we are done with the questions. Okay. Uh, yes. Thanks a lot, Priyanka. On behalf of Analytics with there, I would like to thank you for your time and for delivering such a wonderful session. I'm sure our audience found it insightful, and hopefully we can conduct more such sessions with you in the future. Thank you so much for giving me an opportunity to deliver a session. And uh, like I also love giving the sessions on analytics with their data. Uh, it's my second session. So it was lovely to have again. And as I can see the reaction from the audience, they found it really uh, insightful and lovely. Thank okay, you. kindly share my feedback with me later. Uh, yeah, sure. Yeah, sure. Okay, thank uh, you. Thank you audience for uh, having a patience listening. I hope you guys have filled in the feedback poll. If not, I request you to please fill in the poll about the feedback as it helps us to conduct more such sessions. And if you wish to conduct a webinar or facing any difficulty in registering to upcoming data hours or just want to connect with us, uh, you have the link in the chat section. You can find it or you can write a mail at datar at analyticswithya.com. The recording of this session will be available on our YouTube channel within two days. The link I have already shared. Okay, uh, so we'll we will be back with another session uh, in one hour. There is another session at eight thirty p.m. Also, uh, we have a session tomorrow as well. So you can check those sessions uh, on our website. The link for which is given in the chat section. Till then, bye bye and keep learning. Thank you so much, everyone.